Hey everybody, Brett from Astartes Gaming here, back with some more Mountain Blade to Bannerlord, uh, where we're again looking at the forum posts with all the information that came out of Gamescom 2018. And this will probably be the last video I make regarding this forum post. There is still plenty of other information to talk about, but it would be hard to compile it all into a video. So unless there's something really specific you guys want me to talk about, uh, I'll probably just leave it at this until we get some more major information uh, released. Uh, but the thing I wanted to talk about today is uh, just kind of a couple screenshots that I noticed in the uh, other random information tabs down here. And this one is the management and finance screen. So this is actually what you're going to be managing your your family through. And so I thought that was really interesting. And this video is going to be more speculation than anything because there isn't a ton that we know about this. We haven't seen any examples. And outside of these three screenshots and the video that they were taken from, uh, I haven't really seen anything about this, and so I, I thought it would be very interesting to talk about. So, this is uh, the player character, Bro Brogomir, uh, who's level 13. And so we can see that this is his house. Uh, he is in the house of Gordov, and he's the only one in that house, because this is the player's family, and it's starting fresh. So, uh, we can see up at the top left here that he is, of course, the leader of this house. And we can see that he does have uh, his own little heraldry there. And uh, there are two tabs within this overall screen, the management tab and the finance tab. We're going to talk about the management stuff first because I think that's the most interesting. And the first thing that I really noticed here was over here at parties. So what we can see is obviously this is Bragamir's party. And I'm assuming that this means that there's only one person in that party, so it's it's just him running around by his lonesome right now. But if he had an army of 100, I assume we would see like 100 there. Uh, but what really stuck out to me was this. So upgrade to tier 3 and add a new party. So what that means to me is that you could potentially be, uh, not in direct control necessarily, but have two parties running around fighting in your name. Not in the sense of like you being a faction leader and having other lords that you know help you fight your wars, but this is basically two parties that serve your interests alone. And so I'm very curious to see how exactly those will be run. Now, I can see this playing out a couple of different ways. Either you'll be able to be able to assign this party to like a, a companion. So if you have a companion that's a, a pretty good leader, uh, you know, similar skill set to the, the player, and, you know, somebody that could actually um, field a decent sized army, you could maybe give them the command and they'd go do it, or maybe a family member. So if you have a son who's your heir and he's not, you know, the head of your family yet, because obviously you're still alive, you could still give him an army and have him run around and support you. So I think that's really cool, actually. Uh, it reminds me of the Imperial Rome mod, where you could talk to companions and actually tell them to form a party and then give them troops, and they would just follow you around as another party. And it actually let... It was, it was pretty overpowered because you could, you know, dump a bunch of troops on them. I don't know if there was a limit or... If there was, I think it was the same as your limit. So you could basically field double the amount of troops just by giving the command to your companion and then, you know, rebuilding your own army. Obviously, you had to still pay for those troops, so it wasn't, you know, completely unfair. If you could afford to do that, then in reality, there maybe shouldn't be a reason why you couldn't. But uh, it was very powerful nonetheless. <clears throat> and so we're seeing that here, if you've upgraded your sort of family status enough, something like that will be an option. Uh, we'll also see here uh, all the fiefs that your family holds. So I would assume that it will let you kind of sort them by the owner. So maybe if you click on Brogamir, for example, it'll only show his fiefs. Uh, but otherwise, it'll show everybody's fiefs. And you can kind of see you know, how much sway your family actually holds in terms of land. And then any missions that you are currently on. Which seems like an odd thing to include here, but you know, fair enough. Now... In the little family window here, what I'm really hoping they'll do is 
a family tree. And so, for example, if Brogomir got married, uh, you know, his wife would pop up next to him. And there'd be a little line connecting them. And then when they had a child, you know, that line would come down and the child would be at the end of it. And then it could branch off into siblings and so on and so forth. Uh, that is my hope. So something very Total War-like, uh, like what we see in the family screen in Total War Attila. I don't think we'll get that, though. I think what we're going to see is that as people come into your family, so, you know, when you get married, your husband or wife or, you know, your children, I think we're just going to see more character portraits kind of add up on here. And so eventually you'll just see a long list of character portraits that you can click on for more information. I don't think we're actually going to get a family tree. Based on the way this is laid out, I don't see it being very uh, flexible. It, it is entirely possible that, you know, stuff can shift around to make more room going down, but I don't see that happening. This looks very static to me, and so I think it's just going to be a list, but that's purely speculation. And then we obviously get the companions for, you know, Brogomir, the player character down here. Um, we did see this before, that there is a limit of six. I am still really disappointed with that. I feel like you should be able to have as many companions as you can recruit and train and arm and field. Uh, I'm not really one for heavy-handed game balancing in sandbox games like this. I feel like if something... So, the reason why they're limiting you to six companions, at least I assume, is because they've decided that more than that would be overpowered. I, I can't really think of another justification why you shouldn't be allowed to have more than that. So, as a player... The stance I take is, if I feel that that's overpowered, then I won't run more than six. But it should really be up to me whether or not that's the case. Because depending on your skill as a player, it might not be overpowered to have an army of companions. If you're not very good at the game, it's really not going to matter how many you have, because you as the player are still going to be getting knocked out frequently. And, uh, you know, we all know from Warband... Once the player goes down, unless your army is, you know, very elite, uh, which it would be hard to do with an army made up of a lot of companions. You'd have to be pretty deep into the game to get them that leveled and that geared. And, you know, if you weren't particularly good, it would be hard to get that far in the first place. So, again, I don't think that's really necessary. If I feel, again, that that's too overpowered, then I can just run less of them. That's something that the player can judge for themselves, and so I feel like it should be something left to the player. But that's what they've decided, and so initially that's what we'll have to deal with. I'm sure there will be mods to you know overwrite this uh, fairly quickly. And we also have on the right the various job positions, and so... There are five job slots, six companion slots, which means there will be one companion that does not get one of these jobs, which, again, kind of leads me back to them possibly being viable commanders for this. I'm pointing with my finger, but obviously you can't see that. Hopefully you can follow the cursor, though. Uh, so, uh, again, that leads me to believe that that sixth companion will be viable here or have some other reason for being around other than just being... Uh, a really good warrior, which is still a pretty good reason to be around. But we have these five slots, the engineer, the surgeon, so, you know, building times for siege equipment and structures, uh, ability to heal your troops and lower their risk of death in the first place. Quartermaster is going to be... Uh, I forget exactly the benefits they conferred. I think a little bit on pricing. Uh, I think you're troops will eat slightly less and you might be able to pay them slightly less. I think it just like lowers overall upkeep. Sergeant is going to boost um, combat type stuff and then the scout is going to boost your you know tracking, pathfinding, things like that. So these are all roles that companions filled in Warband, just not explicitly. So you would you know give characters certain skills that would benefit your party and they would kind of fall into these roles but you could have multiples of them and you know they never had a title they just kind of helped you in that way and so my biggest complaint with this system is that in warband you could have as many surgeons as you wanted um 
it was just a matter of how many people you could get leveled in that skill and how many uh, you could justify leveling that skill. Because obviously, if you're putting points into surgery, you're not putting them into combat skills. But you could have as many surgeons as you wanted if that's the way you wanted to play. And so again, we kind of see them forcing us down a particular path here, which is not what I want in my sandbox games. Uh, these particular jobs are the only people that are going to confer bonuses onto your army. So in Warband, you could have those four surgeons, and everybody with surgery skill would be contributing to the overall party surgery skill, as long as that's a party skill. Uh, certain skills are individual skills or leader skills, and so only you as the player uh, will matter in terms of that particular skill. But there are party skills where your companions and even your, your troops to an extent can contribute. And so, again, everybody with that particular skill beyond a certain point would contribute to the overall thing. And so it was worth having multiples of certain types of jobs. Here, only one person is going to be able to do that. And so even if you have two really good surgeons, only one of them is going to matter. Now, companions can die. And so having somebody waiting in the wings could be a benefit. But until that point they're going to be kind of useless unless there's another role that they can fill and again you only get six companions so can you really afford to have a backup at that point maybe one for one particular job but again then that's one companion that isn't really focused as a fighter uh, might not be able to lead a party so yeah they're, they're very limited and I do not like that because Warband to me was brilliant because it was just so open and it was it was the definition of a sandbox. It was just kind of, here's a platform for you to do whatever it is that you want to do and just kind of make your own story in this world. A lot of the design choices in Bannerlord seem to be kind of restricting that. And it is still fairly open. It is a sandbox game, but a lot of the little choices like this are kind of narrowing that scope, and I don't like that. But uh, I, I do like the explicit roles. I like being able to actually give those jobs to people because that's always what I did in my playthroughs anyways, although it was more of like a role play um, type thing rather than like an explicit, you know, this person is going to be my quartermaster and they're going to be the only one that gets these skills. It was just like, all right, this guy's going to be kind of more oriented like that. So he's going to, I'm going to call him this, but you know, it doesn't really mean anything. So I, I like it and I don't like it, but I, I am a little wary of them taking away some of our freedoms. Uh, moving on, we just see uh, basically the same thing here. Uh, it looks like they clicked on... Nope. Is that exactly the same? Yeah, that's exactly the same as far as I can tell. I don't know why they posted it twice. Uh, one last thing to mention on this screen, though. I guess it doesn't matter which one. But you can see the characters around up here. Uh, the tier of the house, I guess. Or the... Yeah, tier of the house, and then it looks like 50 renowned to go up to tier 2, and probably like 100 to tier 3, and so on. Uh, and then here we get to see the actual finance screen, and it's pretty bare bones. Uh, so there's no income here, obviously, or if there is, it's you know being hidden. But any fiefs you had that were generating income would show there, uh, and then obviously this is the expenses, so any expenses that you're incurring would show here, so excuse me, garrisons, parties, things like that. Uh, upkeep for buildings, possibly. Uh, they would all be here, and then it's going to total them for you, and it'll show you your net daily change, and it looks like your overall gold, and then how much you can expect to have after your next payout, whatever. So pretty straightforward there. Uh, and that's really all I wanted to talk about. Mainly I was focused on this, um, because there is some interesting mechanics at play here that we haven't seen a lot of. So let me know what you guys think in regard to these things. Um, are you excited to be able to kind of run your own dynasty a la like Crusader Kings 2 in a much more action-oriented game? I, I know I am. Uh, and then do you like some of the changes they've made in regard to maybe being a little bit more structured but a little bit less free to the player? Uh, let me know in the comments below. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. I had a great time talking about some Bannerlord with you. And I look forward to seeing you guys back here for my next video.